Hello, this is John Fonstock, and we're going to discuss using masks. We're going to produce a flower growing effect. Looks like this. And we're going to use a series of masks to accomplish that. So let's get started. All right, here's my flower. I just brought it to the stage. I drew that in Illustrator and imported it in. And I've put each little piece on its own layer. It's going to be a little bit more convenient to work with it if it's, if it's like that. I want to put this in its own symbol. That way I can reuse that symbol. If you notice in the completed version there are six flowers. Um, and I didn't want to create six different animations. So I'm going to create one, put it in a symbol, and then reuse that symbol to create the other ones. So let's do that. First thing I need to do, this is on the main timeline, so I want all these to retain their layer. So I'm going to select all of the keyframes here, top to bottom. Then I'm going to go up to Edit, Timeline, Cut Frames. So it's going to cut those frames, copy them. You can't just go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. That won't work. you got to go Edit, Timeline, Copy Frames. Now I'm going to insert a new symbol, and this is just going to be a blank symbol. I'm going to name this Flower. Row. I'm going to go ahead and keep it a graphic. Select on that keyframe there and say Edit, Timeline, Paste Frames. So notice that it pasted all of my frames on their own layer. And remember what I had named them, which is pretty great. On scene one, I might have to do some tidying up. Go and go ahead and select all those layers and rename this main. And there's my flower girl. It's right in the, the library. So double click that so we can work within the symbol. So there it is. All right, so now that we're in that symbol, first thing I want to animate is the stem growing. If you notice that three of those, those three parts are all on their own layers. I'm going to need to create a new layer. That's where my mask is going to go on. And I'm going to go ahead and use this artwork, since I've already drawn it once. For the, for the mask. So I'm just going to select all three of those parts, press copy this time, just copy, and then Command Shift V or Paste in Place. You can go up to Edit, Paste in Place. I also, since this is already selected, I, I also want to change the color so I can decipher between the, the difference between the, the artwork and the mask. So it looks, looks the same. Occasionally you'll get a couple of little nooks and crannies that don't quite get covered up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this fill a little bit just to make it a little fatter. So I'm going to go up to Modify, Shape, Expand Fill, and expand that a couple of pixels. So that should just get a little thicker. And just in case there's any nooks or crannies that, that don't get covered, those, those will get covered. All right, now I want this, this layer to be a mask layer. Let's go ahead and name that, Stem Mask. So I'm going to double click that icon. Choose Mask in this type radio button. And then I want to select the layers that I want to be hidden by this mask. So all three of these, Stem, Curl 2, and Curl. And then I'm just going to click, hold, and drag diagonally towards that, towards that icon. And then that should give you an indication that it's being masked. Now masks, you probably already know, you can't see them hiding anything or showing anything unless all of the layers are locked. Currently it's covering everything, so everything's being shown. All right, so mask part's done for now, and now we need to, to animate this stem. So now that that mask is done, it's best that we lock all of the layers except for that mask layer. That's going to uh, allow us to edit the mask layer without damaging anything else. So I did this. I did this animation before, so I know it's, it takes about 55 frames. So I'm going to press F5 to do this part. I'm going to do it on all of the layers here, so I can see everything. Five. And how we're going to do this first part is actually pretty 
old school style. We're just going to key it out. So for every every change, we're going to have one keyframe per change, which is a little bit time intensive, but it's it's really the only way to do something intricate like this in Flash. So I'm going to select all of the all of the frames here in the stem mask layer and I'm going to press F6 and that's going to create 54 new keyframes. So I've got the finished example for you and if you look if you look down here at the mask I'm just going to move it one by one we're just making more and more of that mask apparent. So we're erasing a little bit at a time so that mask eventually covers up everything and reveals the stem. So anything this mask is touching that will reveal whatever it's masking. So that's what we're going to do. For production's sake, uh, what I decided to do is just do it in two stages. One is just to mark the, uh, the, the point of, of, of erasing with my eraser tool. And then I went back and then deleted everything that I didn't need. So for so I want to go keyframe by keyframe and just erase a little bit. So there's my first little piece. So what I'm going to keep is this little piece down here for the first phase. Then the next keyframe I'm just going to erase a little bit higher. So as you can see this little, we're really worried about this bottom part here. Little by little that's going to grow. And so we want to do that all the way, all the way up here. Now you might get to a point where you kind of forget where those lines were because you'll have to be doing uh, the erasing on different sections of this stem. So what I did was I used the onion skin method to to figure out where the last part was. So if you want to, you don't have to. You can you could just eyeball it if you'd like. Um, you'll first need to put the stem mask in outline mode, and then choose the onion skin outlines option and then you probably just want two frames so wherever this little curtain here is whatever frames that's covering that's what you're gonna see so we're gonna see the one before it and then we'll see the next one so I'm gonna click up one so that's gonna give me a visual so there was the last one so I'm seeing the last keyframe and so here's my next one so you want to do that bit by bit just by just using the eraser just one line at a time. So once that's done it should look something like this. So notice this little, little black line is just kind of growing. And we're really worried about this bottom part. All the way until we're done and the last one should just be completed. Okay? So little by little and if it does it, you know, if it takes a little less or a little more than 55 frames, it's no big deal. All right, once that's done, then um, <clears throat> we need to delete the excess. So we go back to the first frame and we click, click that. So we want to leave the bottom part here. Move over one keyframe and delete the top part here. Move over one keyframe, delete. One keyframe. Delete. You could have probably done this in one step, but I just just thought for production this might be a little quicker, a little easier to do. So you just want to do that until it's all done. Once you're done, it should look something like this. So that's just slowly growing up until it's complete. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to go back to scene one. Put that flower grow on the main timeline there. This is graphic so you're gonna need at least 55 frames to see the animation. So there we go. Now if it's more than 55 it's gonna loop but what you can do is you can specify this this graphic to only play one time and just just stop after it's done. How you do that is if you click the if you click the graphic and we go to the properties panel if you go down here there's a looping option and we just say play once. So now it's just going to play once and stop. So let's test that. 